Welcome back to Eye on South Asia. Let's move to our next story. Um, it's quite a few appointments, nice appointments. Uh, some of them are land, landmarks, the first of their kind. And this is about the Goa born Mumbai raised Bernadette de Souza. She has been a long time legal aid and attorney, and she has been appointed as a judge. And she is to head the first family court in New Orleans, which mm -hmm. is excellent. This yes. is the first time. And she yeah. is the first Indian American woman to be uh, an elected judge in this state. And not only that, she's the first Indian American grandmother. Yeah, which so is the catch. She's a 57 year old. And to be elected to such an influential position, she's certainly made a mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bhavna, she has coveted and fought for the position over a decade and a half to give vent to her passion to serve the indigent and less fortunate, particularly the victims of domestic abuse and violence, which is very serious area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that got her sealed for her position. They appreciated her commitment and yes. here is a landmark for her. And actually she had so many endorsements, over 400 endorsements, which just um, had her opponents pulling out of the race. <laughs> uh, by on the same, not level, but on the same uh, category of appointments, we have Raj Mukherjee in our backyard in Jersey City appointed as the deputy mayor. Mm -hmm. He's only a 27-year-old ex-U.S. Marine guy. Mm -hmm. He's and the youngest commissioner and chairman to ever he, serve. He used to be. Mm -hmm. When he was the commissioner, he was the youngest commissioner. Mm -hmm. And then now he is the youngest Deputy Mayor of Jersey City. Yes. And Mayor Jeremy Healy, who appointed him as a Deputy Mayor, was very highly appreciative of him because you look at his history, you know, after post 9 and 11, this kid was probably around at that time, 17 year old, and he listed in US Marines to serve for the country. Mm -hmm. Then he came back, obviously, and, you know, he was kind of called a wonder kind of a kid uh, by and categorized by Star Ledger at that time. Uh, he served under Jim McGreevy, Governor Jim McGreevy, who mm -hmm. appointed him to a very influential position. And then uh, John Corzine also appointed him to the Military Academy Board in 2003. So you, you have a very, very good uh, track record for this guy. And they asked him only one thing that before him, it's been a little unfortunate that two, dep two, uh, two people that who uh, he's succeeding um, have been not necessarily removed for good reasons. They have, they've been both involved in um, frauds, financial frauds. Yes, corruption. And corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's now replacing them. Um, so they asked him, what do you think of replacing such mm -hmm. not so famous personalities? Yeah, he had something very positive <laughs> very, to say. But very interesting <laughs> statement he made, yes. Um, but the fact is, yesterday is history, tomorrow is mystery, but today is a gift. So let's live for today. Very nice statement. I think we should invite him to our show one of these days and uh, introduce him to our audience. Absolutely. On the Indian side, we have Ajay Jain Butoria. He is uh, actually an entrepreneur and he's Bay Area based. Uh, we also announced his uh, recognition this year um, at the non-resident uh, what is called the Pravasi Saman Awards. He was given the non-resident Indian Power Podium Award in January, which uh -huh. we announced. And now he has been selected as the new president of Gopio chapter in Bay Area. And Gopio has been expanding very well. You know, we have almost 25 million NRIs living all over the world. Uh -huh. And they have constantly built local chapters. Right. Not just in the US, it's all over the world. and. Uh, Ajay Jain Butoria now has taken over as the president of the Silicon Valley chapter and he has promises to make sure that he'll be dealing on and focusing on the issues which is related to education, immigration, health care, political education of the community. We congratulate him and send him our best wishes. Yes, that's a great achievement. Uh, the next story, Bhavna, we have is uh, about our Dharun Ravi from Rutgers mm -hmm. and his case has gone into trial and uh, every day if you can go to New Brunswick you can probably attend his trial mm -hmm. and um, the they had quite a series of witnesses and uh, this week alone uh, they presented uh, some of 
his friends from school and what they are trying to show here is that Dharun had a clear prejudice against a certain group which in this case is gays. Yes. Because his roommate who committed suicide, Tyrell Clemente, was found as a gay and he once probably saw him kissing another of his friends. Mm -hmm. That's when he kind of suspected. So he set them up and he called his friends. He linked everybody else through webcam, through uh, chat, web chat mm -hmm. and uh, made sure that they all saw something that happened in his room. Right. And his position is that uh, he did not cause him to commit suicide by jumping from Washington DC bridge. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially because he was kind of depressed because of his, you know, uh, biological orientation. Uh, and that's why he committed suicide. So it's a very difficult case and his defense continues to come up with ways to figure out that Dharun was not responsible for him committing suicide because that is very serious. Yes. And he obviously intruded in his privacy which and many other reasons. In fact, he tampered with some of the witnesses for which he will be punished. Mm -hmm. but there are about to... 15 charges against him. Yeah, and This is the most difficult one. If yes. uh, Clemente committed suicide because of his act is proven to the jury, mm -hmm. then he's in trouble. Yes. It's we a very reported very interesting case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, but yes, interesting mm -hmm. and we'll continue to follow it. Uh, we reported to our viewers about the uh, IME in California Bay Area, which is uh, a privately run institute by Bindu Babu Rajan, and that was shut down. And uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs Bureau for Private Post Secondary Education has filed an accusation which we uh, shared with our uh, audience that. Um, this school was not run appropriately. They were making false claims, unauthorized substantive change to approval to operate false advertising of accreditation, defaulting on an enrollment agreement, maintenance of permanent student records at satellite location which is not allowed actually, mm -hmm. failure to employ a sufficient number of qualified faculty and if you don't have it then how can you be an accredited institution. So there was kind of misrepresentation by this college in addition to claiming that they have a license to do few things which they are not like MRI and ultrasound technology and uh, the state authorities took an objection and shut them down. Right. But and state they want to revoke their license. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They, they, Meanwhile, they, you have so many students who are stranded. enrolled in this university stranded and they need a place to go where their credits will be accepted. So and that's they, a dilemma that they in have. In fact, they are being held from the tuition recovery fund by the state authorities for the money they have all put. Some of them, as we stated last week, were as close as two weeks to getting graduated according to the laws of the school, but yes. they're back to nowhere. Exactly. Uh, we have uh, another very interesting story uh, this week about, um, this is actually the good news. Uh, we uh, shared with our audience about the two kids, the two little infant kids um, mm -hmm. uh, who were taken away from their parents, three year old and one year old, uh, Abhagyan and Aishwarya, because the Norwegian authorities thought their parents did not have the competence to keep the custody. Yes. And the state took over. Mm -hmm. And then the Indian government has had a big discussion, massive argument, or probably row with Norwegian authorities who were not willing to let them go at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, this because the kids' um, visa had expired and these Norwegian authorities were actually, uh, on the behalf of the kids, were reapplying for an extension of the visa. And there was a, a tiff between India and Norway in that, you know, they, these are our citizens and we can protect them and we know what should be done. And they belong to the state of India. Yes. And uh, as we shared with the audience once again, his, their uncle was allowed to take the custody. It was kind of a way of a face saving eventually by Norway authorities. Mm -hmm. um, so finally they have agreed that their uncle can take the custody and bring them back into India, which is good news. Yes. So I hope uh, we should be able to bring back the final news that they have re united with uh, their own families mm -hmm. and their own parents if they uh, are allowed. Um, yes. <laughs> if it's the best thing for the but kids. But of course that will be done. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so, Bona, a very uh, interesting angle for Europe, which is going through a financial crisis and um, all of Europe actually, is a very strange thing that Europe remains one of the most popular destination for visitors from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But here we have a unique story that we have close to 300,000 Indians visiting Paris. Wow. Which and that's, is a, that's a growth of over 200% 200%. in the last decade. And um, what's interesting is that as India grows, its tourism, its tourists grow uh, going all around the world. And, um, and it's the nearest place if you take it's only, I think, eight and a half or nine hours trip from India. Yes. And uh, I don't know about you, when we were all growing up, for us, Paris was all about perfumes and... Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, fashion and lifestyle. So everybody wanted to visit Paris and Switzerland and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very uh, interesting that India has such a high level of tourism into Paris. And I think in this year alone, mm -hmm. it should grow further because Indians otherwise like to go to UK, London especially. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, with the Olympics coming up, so obviously prices are going to go up, security is going to go up, traffic is going to go up. Right. So it's more inconvenient to touch that part. So it's it becomes very attractive to go to Paris. And or even other places. Yes. So, uh, and not Paris. only that, in Paris they're, they're noting this change and they're wanting to, you know, make Indians feel more at home even. Yeah. And they're catering, you know, food and those sorts of things to Indian tastes. So that's... That's a good thing. But I love the French soup and the bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your friend Frida Pinto is on the cover of Esquire. Yes? Mm -hmm. the girl Esquire is, UK. And she's trying to show off that she's a grown-up girl. <laughs> remember right. that little thing? We, we remembered soup. her in uh, Slumdog Millionaire. She I was cannot... like the, the cute little romantic, you know. She's... And um, she's all grown up now. And she's... Uh, posing in kind of a provocative outfit in Esquire. And she's also, um, well, she's reported to a, be appearing in a nude scene in her next film, mm, Trishna. Yeah. Trishna. Trishna, yeah. Well, uh, so whatever works for her, she's yeah. a big star <laughs> and she's a big girl now. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the story on cricket one more time trying to enter U.S. and it seems there will be finally a 2020 league expected in next year and the guy who started the cricket leagues in UK Premier League, English Premier League, has been here camping and they expect that uh, they will start 2020 in US, which I'm looking forward to. It will be a very interesting development. Mm -hmm. Especially with so many cricket fans now here because US was never really a destination for cricket, but I think it's really Actually, grown. cricket started in US and then it disappeared. And they say because U.S. Uh, citizens did not want to spend five <laughs> days playing cricket and ending in a dull they, draw. They wanted so they to quicken the baseball. pace. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, one very important uh, announcement to be shared. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the king of guzzles, Ghulam Ali, is here in New York. And this week he is performing in New Jersey mm -hmm. on Saturday. Uh, and uh, then uh, he will be at the Edison Hotel in New Jersey and then next Saturday uh, he will be in the Hindu Temple uh, Auditorium in New York. Mm -hmm. So it's another big chance to see the legend in person and you have to hear him, you have to see him perform. This guy is phenomenal. Did you say next week is another chance to see him? In New York mm -hmm. and this Saturday which is uh, essentially Today, yeah. he is in New Jersey, mm -hmm. in Addison, and uh, next Saturday he will be in New York. Okay. And then he continues with this trip for the rest of the country. Okay. So he has a tour going on, and that sounds very exciting. Yep. I might want to check that out. Yeah. I certainly plan to attend. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Keep watching us week after week. Catch us on the same channel, same time, same place on Crossings TV, Eye on South Asia. Also find us on YouTube. Our channel name is Eye on South Asia, all one word. Find us on Facebook as well. And be sure to click like to become a fan of Eye on South Asia. Until next week, I'm Bob Navanan and wishing you a great weekend. And I'm Sunil Hali. Once again, sunny days are here again. So we'll be with you every week after week with Ion Asia. 
South Asia.